and we'll end up this section talking about subnet delegation. So we're in the virtual network that we created earlier, AZ700 course in my case. It's located in the West US as we saw. So we're going to go over to the subnet tab here. Now you'll see here when I created this virtual network, I created one subnet called default. Every virtual network must have one subnet. As I said, the purpose of the subnet is to subdivide the overall address space. So if we look at the address space for the virtual network, I have reserved a slash 24 address space for it, which gives me 256 IP addresses to work with minus the reserved IP addresses, which we'll talk about in a second. So this is the limit that we have currently. Now we can always extend the address space. So right now I can say 2.10.0.10.0.1.0 and now I've added an additional 256 addresses. I can just click save on that and I'm basically giving myself double of the space to create subnets and resources. So let's switch over to the subnets real quick. So we created this default subnet when we first created the virtual network and at that time it was a smaller subsection of the overall address space. So when we created it, we had 256 addresses and we reserved 64 addresses for the default space. Now the 64 addresses gets cut down by five because Microsoft Azure reserves five addresses of every subnet for itself. So we really only have 59 available even though there are 64 that are taken. Now, like I said, the purpose of a subnet, one of the purposes of a subnet is to subdivide a network for your own purpose. And that is to separate out various parts of your solution according to their security context. So you might have a front end web server that you want to be open and public to the internet, maybe over port 80 or port 443. And so that's going to exist in one subnet that you can allow traffic in over those ports. But then you might have a middle tier, an application tier, which only ever gets communicated to by other parts of your solution and never by the open public. And you want that to be in a different security context and that could be on its own subnet. Finally, you might have a database tier or a backend tier or some other extremely secure network that only gets communicated over port 1433, for instance. And so you don't want web traffic traveling to your backend servers. And therefore that can be in its own subnet. So you can, you don't have to, but you can divide up your solution into subnets according to the security context. And then you set the rules, the NSG rules, so that traffic can travel between the subnets according only to the traffic that you're expecting. Now I did name this first subnet default. It does not have to be named default, but that's what I called it. And you'll see the second purpose for subnets is for the Microsoft Azure's own purposes, which could be the gateway, could be the firewall, could be the Bastion server. So as we're going to go through this, we're going to create subnets that Microsoft is going to need for its own purpose. And we'll do that. So that's just a general breakdown on what a subnet is and what its purpose is. We're going to start to go and create some more subnets for ourselves in the next video. Hi guys, this is Scott Duffy from GetCloudSkills.com and I do would love to invite you. I do have courses on all of them and the links are in the description. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below this video. Thank you so much for watching. Click the thumbs up button if you like this video. There's the subscribe button down below if you want to see more videos like this as I create them.